Hey everybody, it's uh, Marissa Ann from Mar just from Marissa Dash Ann on YouTube, uh, where I talk about all things nerdy, and it could be anything, comic books, uh, what else, um, movies, shows, going to conventions, um, things like that. Um, so as if you were following me on Twitter or Instagram, uh, you all know that I was preparing to go to Shore Leave 43. So July 7th through the 9th, which is Friday, Saturday, and Sunday of last week, is when I went to Shore Leave 43. And it was my first time going there. I enjoyed it, had lots of fun, met new people, um, saw some panels, and uh, just, just all around fun. But um, how I found out about Shore Leave is just through a, uh, a simple Google search. I was just looking for conventions for uh, people who were from Star Trek. And I ended up finding Shore Leave that way. Apparently, Shore Leave has been here since the 70s, I believe. I may be wrong. But it's been here, I believe, since the 70s. Um, so what, so I'm just going to break it down for you day by day, what I did and, um, just explain to you about, you know, just what I did. Um, so on the first day, um, my husband took me to the airport, got on the plane and I ended up flying into, uh, Baltimore because shore leave is not in Baltimore. It's in Hunt Valley, uh, Maryland, at uh, the Delta Hotels out there uh, by Marriott. Um, so I flew into Baltimore, um, went to the airport. When I got to the airport, uh, I got my uh, car rental and I rented mine through Turo. I wasn't going to give like Enterprise and Hertz all of that money because the same exact vehicle that I rented through Turo, I could have gotten through um, Hertz or, you know, Enterprise or any of the other big name car rentals, but I got it cheaper through Turo. So I got my car rental, um, stayed in contact with my, um, with the person that I was renting the car through. I also stayed in contact with the Airbnb owner, um, went to the store, uh, picked up some supplies that I needed, went to FedEx and printed off uh, my art that I got commissioned. Um, and then I also went to, um, and then I ended up going back to my Airbnb after that. So um, before I even went to shore leave, like I had a little bit of like a bumpy morning afternoon because there was an issue with the car that I rented, but I called the owner and, uh, about what was going on and they, um, fixed it immediately. Um, so around five o'clock I, I left my Airbnb, um, got to the Delta hotels where shore leave is at, at around five 30. Now, uh, for those of you that know me, you know that I am a, my favorite character from Star Trek is the Doctor, which is played by, um, who is played by Robert Picardo. Uh, very, when I got there, got out the car, started walking, and with me, I suffer from anxiety and panic disorder, so the anxiety and nervousness just automatically kicked in like i struggled walking through that parking lot because i was very very nervous to meet him never met him before never seen him at a convention but i was very nervous to meet him so i just counted backwards from five and just started walking in um went in i got my badge got my tickets for my photo ops that i was going to do um told them like hey uh do you guys I need some help with a certain situation, meeting a certain uh, guest there. 
and they they were asking me, well, are you okay? I was like, yeah, I just suffer from anxiety and panic disorder, and I'm going to need some help because I'm panicking too much right now. So they directed me to disability services, talked to them, and they provided me with um, an emotional support human or what I, what I, or what you're going to hear me refer to as an ESH, my emotional support human. His name is Daryl. And Daryl helped me out a lot. And I told Daryl the situation. And Daryl was like, oh, th th this is going to be easy. You have nothing to be nervous about. So he took me uh, downstairs, down the escalator, and walked me over to Mr. Picardo's table. So I walked, so I'm like maybe the second, third, fourth person in line. And my anxiety is getting worse. But the, but the more people that started, uh, the faster that line moved, the faster my anxiety started going, started leaving me. And um, eventually there was one person ahead of me and I was like, Daryl, you know, it's weird because my anxiety is gone. He was like, well, that's good. He was like, you know, like, remember, like they may be, uh, you know, famous people, but at the end of the day, they're human beings just like us. And I said, you're right. So... Yeah, and I said, you're right. And so I went up to, uh, it was my turn. And so I went up to him and Daryl introduced me to him, gave him a little backstory like, hey, you know, she, she she's very anxious, very nervous right now. So I approach him. I say, hi, hello. Um, let me ask with you guys, that that is very fuzzy. I really don't remember everything that I said or everything that he said to me, but I remember I thanked him for the cameo that I got from Mother's Day, uh, reminded him that um, he was my favorite Star Trek actor. He was like, thank you, appreciate that. Um, and then I, uh, once I got that out of the way, then I was able to give him um, two pieces of art that I had commissioned for him and a letter and it was an envelope uh at first he thought that he was supposed to sign it for me and i told him no uh that's actually for you and you know he thanked me for it and uh in return he gave me a uh, free autograph i did not expect that to happen i didn't give that to him i didn't give him the art to get something in return i did not expect that but it was a nice gesture and i thanked him for it um, and then I, uh, and then after that, uh, you know, I said, thank you. And I left, uh, told Daryl, like, thank you. You know, you got me through this big hump for the weekend. And, um, I told him you have no idea. Like you just made my weekend even easier than what it was before. So he said, Hey, I'm here for you whenever you need me. I was like, thanks, Daryl. So I went to the next table and I got to meet Penny Johnson Gerald. Now, if you don't know who she is, she plays the doctor in the Orville. And she also plays uh, Captain Benjamin Sisko's girlfriend in Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Now, I didn't know she was in those shows until like maybe a couple of months ago. Because that's not where I know her from. What I know her from is from a Disney Channel movie called The Color of Friendship. That's where I know her from. So I went to her table, stood in line, and I told her, and I introduced myself, and I said, you know, I know that you were in these two shows, but that's not the shows that I know you from. And she kind of had like a little puzzled look. But I told her, I know you from The Color of Friendship. And she immediately started smiling because I remember a show, because of how, that, that's a very old uh, Disney movie. Not really old. I think it came out in like the early 2000s. And um, I told her how, uh, when I was student teaching, that uh, I would show that movie sometimes to my students. And I also, and now that I also work with adults and children with developmental disorders, I sometimes show them that movie as well. And uh, she gave me a backstory on uh, that movie and how it is based on true events. And I believe um, the two girls that the movie is about 
Uh, I believe they are still friends today and they still stay in contact with each other. So she gave me a backstory on that. I don't remember every little detail about it, but um, every little detail that she gave me, but it, it was nice to hear that backstory. Um, and so I uh, got a selfie with her. But what her handler told me, her assistant said that, just so you know, she is the queen of selfies. And so uh, I gave her my phone and uh, her assistant wasn't exaggerating at all. She really is the queen of selfies. She took my phone and just went nuts with the selfies. And I enjoyed every single moment of taking selfies with her. Uh, so after that, um, I went upstairs. Um and I went into the lounge area, the bar. And uh, mind you, with me, I kind of struggle with social situations. I struggle with meeting new friends, talking to people, all of that. Although I'm a talkative person, I still struggle with that. And I know that's kind of hard for people to comprehend. But it's true. You can be a very talkative person and your social skills still stink. But that's okay. It's a learning experience for him. So what I did was I went upstairs to the lounge. And I'm just walking around. First, I got myself uh, a drink. Um, and I'm just walking around trying to find a place to sit. Mind you, every single table is taken with a few chairs at those tables. And so I knew that if I wanted to sit down and enjoy my drink and relax, I'm going to have to sit with somebody that I don't even know. So I walked around asking people, you know, like, is this chair taken? Is this table taken? Can I sit here, sit there? You know, and some, and they all said, well, we're waiting on so-and-so to come or whatever. And I said, okay. So finally I went to the back of the uh, lounge and there was a table with two people sitting there. And I just asked them, you know, is anybody sitting in these two empty chairs? And they said, no, come and join us. So I sat down and uh, introduced myself. They introduced themselves to me. And we just had a good conversation. Uh, apparently, these two people, they have been coming to Shore Leave for years. And they gave me some backstory on Shore Leave, gave me some backstory on themselves. And I gave them, you know, a backstory on myself and um, told me, like, uh, you know, the types of things that people do at shore leave and, uh, you know, how much I'm going to enjoy being here. Um, I asked them about the masquerade, which is actually, which is, you know, which is their costume contest. They asked me, you know, were you going to be in it? And I was like, well, I do have a cosplay and this is my first, this will be my first time cosplaying, but I wasn't sure if I was going to do the masquerade because I have no clue what to do or how to prepare for a costume contest. So they said, well, that's okay. You know, just sit back, you know, and just enjoy the ride, which is what I did. Um, so we, I was there talking with them for maybe, oh my goodness. Maybe like three, maybe like three, three and a half hours I was sitting at the table talking with them and I enjoyed it. And I, um, you know, I felt calm, you know, talking with them, you know, talking with people is not something that's scary. You know, that's actually how you make new friends. That's how you meet new people. You have to get up and you have to go and talk to people and find some sort of, and if you can find some sort of common interest that you have with that person. So after that, um, I went into the uh, restaurant next door um, and they had around, they had a karaoke coming going on that was getting ready to start. So me, I was one of the first people there. Uh, I sat in the back. Um, and I thought when I sat in the back, I was going to sit by myself and that didn't happen. Uh, but in the beginning, I was sitting in the back by myself, and uh, I just sat there and just enjoyed the karaoke. Um, and then while I'm sitting in the back enjoying it, two other people come and sit at my table. And um, I introduced myself, they introduced themselves to me, and we just started talking about whatever, you know, while karaoke was going on. And uh, I had a good time talking with them. 
And so halfway through karaoke, uh, it's probably like 11.30 at night because it's only like an hour long, in walks uh, Robert Picardo, who plays the Doctor in Voyager, and in comes uh, Robert Duncan McNeil, who plays Tom Paris in Star Trek Voyager. If you also don't know who Robert Duncan McNeil is, he also played the boyfriend in the movie Masters of the um, yeah Masters of the Universe, the He Man movie that came out in like the mid '80s. Um, I don't remember the name of the character he played. I just knew it was the boyfriend. That's all I know. But um, I, they came in and they did, I think, maybe two or three songs. I, I knew it was at least, I know they did two, and I think they may have done a third. Uh, but uh, it was fun watching them to do karaoke. And both of the guys can really sing. I mean, you know... They got good voices. So, I mean, they wanted to drop an album, which I believe Robert Ricardo already has done two albums. Uh, they they can't. Um, so it was a joy to watch them. Daryl, Daryl, my ESH, my emotional support human, um, you know, came to my table and said, hey, did you, did you ever think you would see, you know, two famous people just walk in one day and just do karaoke with everybody. I was like, no, never thought that would happen. Cause you, cause I told him like, usually they don't do stuff like that. And so he said, well, here at Shore Leave, this is what we do. This is a fan run event and we make everybody feel comfortable. And I said, well, you know, that's nice. I'm glad that, you know, the guests feel comfortable to be around, you know, uh, fans like that because, because some of them just don't, and you don't really get that type of, um, intimacy, intimacy with those with those guests. Um, usually, when you go to conventions, they're at their table. You may talk to them for like ten seconds, twenty seconds, get your picture, get your autograph, and boom, you're gone. Especially like with the corporate run type conventions. But when you have fan run conventions, that's different. Um, it, it's much more comfortable, much more calm. So. Uh, I, I was glad that uh, I was able to experience that on day one. So uh, after karaoke, I ended up going home. I said goodbye to the two people that I met. And um, their names were uh, Andy and Kira. And the two people that I met at the, um, at the lounge in the previous story that I told you, their names were Mike and Lori. So I met I met them. So meeting Mike, Lori, Andy, and Kara made my made my evening on the first day, and also meeting Daryl that that made my night on the fir- on, on there as well. So I go back to my Airbnb, go to sleep, wake up in the morning, and mind you, this is Saturday morning that I'm waking up. This is day two and um, put my cosplay on. Um, if you want to see what my cosplay looks like, again, just go check out, check out my Twitter page and my Instagram page. As of the recording of this video, I have not loaded up anything to Instagram. It's all on Twitter. Um, but after the recording, I will load up everything on Instagram as well. Um, so I got my cosplay on. Um, it was a, the cosplay that I created, it was designed after, um, the jacket itself is based off of the Deep Space Nine, First Contact, Star Trek Nemesis type jacket. And the pants that I wore is based off of the, the uniform pants from uh, the Wrath of Khan. And on those uniform pants, there's like a stripe that goes down on each side of the pants. So um, I'm a, when it comes to Star Trek, I like the medical and science division. So typically in a Star Trek uniform, your uniform is supposed to be all black. And then the color is usually like right here or the color, you'll, you'll wear the color turtleneck that goes with it. That's not what I did. Instead, I made the jacket and the plants a royal blue color for science and medical. 
and the part of the jacket right here which is normally gray I made that into a, a rainbow pattern and I mind you I didn't make this costume I designed it but I hired a seamstress to do it her name is Lashana so thank you Lashana for making my costume because everybody loved it but anyway the part over here of the jacket that's normally gray is um is, is is a rainbow color and then the pants uh were also royal blue and instead of a red stripe going down i had a rainbow stripe going down and like i said i did this in honor of you know people those who are uh lgbtqia plus and i usually don't say all those letters i usually just refer to them as the crew because it's just easier but um and then I wore a black turtleneck under there. Now, normally you will wear the normal uniform. You will wear the colored turtleneck that your division was. But like I said, I didn't do that. I I, I went different on mine. So um, I end up going, I go back to Delta Hotels for shore leave. And I walk in there and the first thing that everybody says is, I love your cosplay. Oh, one more thing. I forgot to tell you. I had on the back of my um, on the back of my cosplay. I have a huge. I had this huge patch. I'll be right back. I'm going to show you what the patch looks like. Okay, I'm back. So here is what the patch looks like. Okay, now the the patch looks like this. So you see, it has like the doctor's mobile emitter, and it has one of the a quote for him that says, "I'm just as real as any of you." That's the patch, but the patch right here is on the drawstring bag. She had an extra one left over and she made a drawstring bag for me out of it. And then also just brought the uniform with me too. So these right here are the pants. Okay, so it's the basic designed after the pants that they wore in Wrath of Khan. And like I said, it's royal blue and has a stripe going all the way down. Okay, so I'll just show you that. This is a so went all the way down to the bottom of the pants and then the same thing on the other side right here now with me i did not want a button on here i just had her just put like a drawstring in it and so that way i can just tie it up and it just makes it easier to deal with the pants that way so let me pull this up back over here and then here's the jacket because the jacket was kind of hard to explain so again like i said this jacket is based off of the ds9 first contact and insurrection and nemesis uh uniform so normally if you were in medical and science since i'm a fan of that you your uniform wouldn't be all blue you would wear the blue turtleneck or teal turtleneck i don't know like when you watch star trek the, the colors for the um the for the science division like they, they tweak it a little bit sometimes but anyway now in the original one the in the uniform this should be all gray this should be all black but no i did the rainbow up here and, and i made this royal blue and um let me turn around same thing right here and then this is the patch that was officially put on the back of it. Hopefully you guys can see it. So again, it has the doctor's mobile emitter and it just says, I'm just as real as any of you. So yeah, that's what it looks like. And I don't remember the name of the person who did the embroidery, but my seamstress, she's in contact with that person. And, you know, I just thanked her for doing that. So um, that's what I wore. And then, like I said, instead of me wearing a blue uh, turtleneck under there, I didn't. I wore a black one. And mind you, you guys, it was really hot out there. I was not going to purchase a long sleeve turtleneck. I went and got a short sleeve one. Okay. So I got a black one. Okay. Now, originally I was going to do white, but I thought white may look kind of weird with it. So I just went and got black. But other than that, um, went in there and... Um, Everybody loved the cosplay. Like, I had people pulling me to the side to take pictures of themselves with me. And then I had people who just wanted a picture of me by myself in the costume. 
and it, it was it, it was a lovely costume. It felt very comfortable, and I knew a lot of people were going to like it. And so, um, so like I said, everywhere I went, everybody loved that costume. So, like I said, day two, I did that. Um, I went. I pretty much just, and I kind of, I didn't get there early in the morning because, um, well, when I got there, I uh, purchased another photo op. I did the Voyager one. Uh, because originally I purchased a photo op with just Robert Picardo, and then I saw that they had a Voyager combo one, which was with Robert Picardo and Robert Duncan McNeil, so I purchased that one. And uh, I just sat there and I waited. I got there, I think, like around 10 o'clock, but my photo ops didn't start till like 11.20, 11.30, something like that. And... Um, Here's the thing with the photo ops at Shore Leave. Normally, if you go to like those corporate, big corporate conventions, those types of um, conventions, those lines are huge, very long for photo ops, depending on who the guest is. But when I went to Shore Leave, um, they only allow like 1,500 people max per day to come into the hotel. So... I'm not exactly sure how many tickets were sold for the entire weekend, but it was at least 1,500. Um, Saturday was also their big, biggest uh, day of the weekend. And although it was very busy, it didn't feel busy. It didn't feel like there was a lot of people in there. So I appreciated that a lot. But anyway, um, you know, I, like I said, uh, when it was time for me to go to do my photo op with uh, Robert Ricardo, uh, put my stuff down, uh, went to the back and to the area where they did the photo ops. And, um, he, 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 uh, you know, he read the letter that I gave him and he thanked me for it. And, uh, and I said, you know, you're welcome. I appreciate, you know, you reading the letter and I appreciate, you know, the, the character that, that, that you performed. And he said, thank you. You know, he said it was a very kind letter and he appreciated it. Um, took my photo with him, walked out, said thank you, walked out, uh, went in back in line again because right after that was the Voyager one. Went in there with Robert Picardo and Robert Duncan McNeil and took a photo off with them. Uh, uh, it, it was it, it was very surreal just standing next to those two guys from Voyager because the thing is like first of all this is my first time doing photo ops I've never done those before I'm used to taking pictures at the autograph table itself but um how can I put this um when you see your 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 favorite celebrity or favorite actor or character on TV you know, it's very different when you meet them in real life because when because they're just normal people just like you. Whatever it is that you have in your head that you think that they're going to be like or whatever, they, they are not their characters. They are normal human beings just like the rest of us. Not to say that I didn't know that because I knew that because I've met several celebrities at different conventions before, but... Um, it was a surreal experience for me because I got to meet two people from a show that I loved all the, that I loved for my entire life since I was a kid. I grew up on Star Trek when I was a kid. Um, when I was a kid uh, is when the next generation came out um, and I was very, very, very little. I don't know if I was probably like a toddler when that show came out. Uh, the My first memory of Star Trek is when my dad was watching the episode Skin of Evil. And I remember walking into the living room and I remember turning over, walking over, turning around, looking at the television. And I see William Riker being dragged into that tar pit. And he was screaming his head off because he was being dragged in there. And then um, I remember his face coming up out of the tar pit. And I'm just going to call it a tar pit, but that's not technically what it was. I got to go back and watch the episode. 
And I remember just seeing his face and it was just covered in that gunk. And I remember just screaming my head off and running up to my dad. And I was like, dad, I'm scared. He was like, okay. So I just sat next to my dad and I just had a pillow and a, a pillow and a blanket over my head for the entire time. Uh, so that's my first memory of Star Trek. But the show that I um, watched as a kid growing up was Star Trek Voyager. Um, and the reason why I liked that series was because there was there were kids in it. And I know like maybe like the first two, three seasons, we don't really see children. Uh, the first kid I think we actually see is Naomi Wildman. <clears throat> and then eventually... Um, Echab and the other two or three uh, children that were bored, you see them come in. But um, Voyager just was just like a much calmer show. It wasn't um, it wasn't like DS9. And mind you, I never saw DS9. I didn't start watching DS9 until until a couple of months ago. But um, it wasn't as First of all, DS9 is a very good show, but Voyager wasn't as, I don't want to use the word violent, because DS9 wasn't violent. It wasn't as rough, I would say, story-wise, um, as DS9 was. Voyager was a bit calmer, um, but like I said, you know, I, I liked Voyager because it, it was because like I said there was a lot of kids in it it was also a very diverse show uh Voyager was also the type of show that talked about that did not shy away from talking about uh things that are going on in our world right now and even during that time um it didn't shy away from talking about those topics um and that's why I also like Voyager I also like Voyager because you had a female captain you know, how often do we get to see a female uh, captain um, as the star of a show on Star Trek? So far, I, she was like, I believe she is like the first one. And um, I was glad to see that. But um, like I said before, going back to the photo ops, it was a surreal moment taking a picture with two people from a show that I loved watching as a kid and I still love watching it till this day. Um, so did the photo ops and then I went to the uh, Star Trek Voyager panel with, with, them, with, with the two of them, Robert Duncan and Neil, Robert Picardo. Um, you know, and, they, and, and you know, it, it's like any typical panel. I mean, honest with you, I never been to a, a, a panel before, but it was like any typical panel where, you know, they told you about their experiences uh, working on the set and uh, fans asked questions and they answered them to the best of their ability. Um, they even told us about their future projects that they're doing. If they were allowed to tell us about, you know, whatever future projects that they're doing and stuff that they're doing right now, in addition to just talking about Star Trek Voyager. Um, and it was also fun because, uh, the, 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 the bantering that the two of them did between each other. And it was, and it's obvious, like, you know, these guys have been friends with each other for years. So the bantering between them, even, I remember them saying, like, I guess somebody complained about it or whatever, but, but, um, you know, those guys are friends. They've known each other for, I don't know, how, since since Voyager and maybe even before that. But um, it was it was fun watching the reaction between the two of them and how they play off of each other. Um, so after the, the, the panel, I ended up going to uh, Robert Duncan and Neil's table and I asked him some questions about the, uh, about the movie Masters of the Universe and he answered them for me. And he did say he was interested in uh, doing another one, hopefully, hopefully directing um, the, the the Masters of the Universe movie because uh, he's mainly a director now. I don't know when the last time I saw him in a movie or a TV show just acting, but he's mainly directing right now. That, that, that's, his for, that, that's what he's mainly doing right now. Um, 
And so I took a selfie with him and I went on my way, uh, went back to uh, Robert Picardo's table um, and I took a uh, selfie and autograph with him. Don't remember if I, what question I asked him, I'm not sure. If you guys probably haven't figured it out, the main reason why I was going there was was to see Robert Picardo. That was the main reason why I was there. I still like Robert Duncan McNeil because, you know, both of them were in Voyager. They're my that that's the show, that's the Star Trek show that I grew up with. But um did a selfie and an autograph, like I said, with him. Um gave my cell phone to him and I just let him, you know, just start snapping pictures because apparently, um, my experience with selfies, I stink at taking them. Apparently, I wasn't looking at the camera like I should have. But that's neither here nor, nor there. That it, it was fun. And then I met um, Rob Perlman and J.K. Woodward. Uh, Rob Perlman does a lot of pop culture storybooks. Um, like he's done some... He just released a book called... It's about Loki. But it hasn't been released yet. But he released the book at Shore Leave, and I purchased that book, and he signed it for me. And then there was a book that I bought, I believe, last month called, um, you know what, let me go and get the book so I can make sure that uh, I give you guys the correct information. Okay, this is Rob Perlman's newest book. From what I understand, at the time of Shore Leave, which was last week, this book has not been released. It may have released right now, but I'm not sure. So this is his newest book, um, Loki's Book of Magic and Mischief. I believe this is his first or second Marvel book. But it's a book filled with uh, magic tricks. And from what his assistant told me, I believe... Uh, I don't remember where he said he got the magic tricks from. I believe he said he got them from... Uh, his dad or his uncle, one of his relatives was a magician. And that's where he got all these different types of magic tricks from. So I was skimming through the book and it's, it's, it's pretty fun. Probably going to, and, um, knowing my son, he likes magic. So I'm probably going to get him his own copy of this book. Cause I don't want him to damage this because Rob Perlman signed it. And then this other book that I didn't remember the name of is called the Star Trek book of friendship. Um, Rob Perlman and Jordan Hoffman wrote this book. Um, and then when I started reading it one day, didn't realize that Ethan Phillips and Robert Picardo uh, did the foreword for this book. So uh, Rob Perlman and J.K. Woodward, both of them signed it. Robert Picardo signed it as well. Um, when I went to do the autograph and selfie with him. Uh, so... Um, yeah, he signed it. The, all three of them signed it. And then I took a picture with Rob Perlman and J.K. Woodward. Um, and then what happened after that? Went upstairs, went to another, uh, panel. Um, based, and it was like a very small room. So it was going to be like very close. Um, Everybody was, we weren't sitting on top of each other, but we were kind of close. But it was a panel for, uh, I don't remember who the panel was for. But I think it was, yeah, it was for Picardo, but he didn't come to this particular panel for whatever reason, not my business. But um, we still were able to uh, have fun at that panel. And we just talked about, everybody in that room just talked about all things. Robert Picardo. Um, and then after that, uh, I went to the Masquerade Ball, which is the costume contest. Um, I enjoyed myself at the costume contest. Uh, I stayed in there for the uh, to watch all of the the kids ones and the kids ones they were so cute and they were not only and they weren't just cute but they were fantastic like their parents and them put in a lot of work for these costumes 
put in a lot of work for their presentations. Now, the reason why I did not participate in the masquerade was because even though I had a cosplay, I it was my first time cosplaying and I did not know how you prepare or do a presentation for a costume contest. So I just stayed there. So I went there so I can get an idea of what you're supposed to do. So um, the next time I go to a convention, um, I'll participate in the costume contest. I'm not sure which one. I'm not saying the exact, I'm not saying like the very next convention I'm going to participate in one, but I will cosplay. And in fact, the next convention I'm going to is Gen Con in Indianapolis. So I'm going to wear this same cosplay again, but I'm not going to participate in the costume contest for it. But anyway, I, I, I enjoyed watching everybody at the costume contest, the masquerade, you know, um, it, it was just a joy to watch people bring, um, their favorite characters to life because it just shows you how much we appreciate, um, the characters that we like on TV or in the movies or in comic books or whatever. Cause you know, we, we, we can relate to these, these characters and the people that portrayed them, you know, we love them just as much, but, um, but, but that's why we do the cosplay is to show our appreciation for whatever fandom that we love, whatever, you know, character that we like or whatever. And that's why we do it. Um, and then after that, um, because I was out so late the night before on Friday, I went home and left early when it got me some, some dinner and I left. Um, and then the next day, Sunday, which is the last day, which was a tiny bit emotional for me because, you know, I enjoyed myself. And that's why I guess it was a little bit more emotional for me. And I went and I showed up um, like at around 10 o'clock, 9.45, 10 o'clock to the show, to shore leave. Um, and I went back to Robert Picardo's table because I wanted to explain to him why my favorite, why Lifeline was my favorite episode from Voyager. And I only had like, and so I only had like maybe, and I mean maybe a minute to talk to him about it. Um, and I'll be honest with you, I did be honest with you, I did not go into detail with it because one, I didn't have a lot of time and two, it's um, pretty emotional and I didn't want to get emotional at that table of why Lifeline is my favorite episode from Star Trek Voyager. But um, he appreciated um, what it was that I said, um, and then again, uh, ap and I, and then afterwards, like I said, I took another selfie with him, and this time he showed me which part of the camera I'm supposed to look at, so selfies actually came out better. But I don't care either way. I got to take a selfie with two, with three Star Trek actors that I liked. So, and then after that, um, I walked around a little bit, looked at different things, um, went into the vendors hall and I roamed around just to look at stuff. Excuse me. I didn't buy anything, um, because I spent my money on buying food and purchasing the things that I was focusing on purchasing things for. Um, what else did I do? Oh, I... <laughs> wore my cosplay again but just the jacket and i'm telling you people were uh pulling me again to the side wanting me to take a picture wanting me to take a picture with them or just take a picture of just the the cosplay itself and like a lot of people really appreciated it and now mind you while i'm walking around uh one of the short leave staff comes up to me and said marissa i was trying to find you all day yesterday um, Penny wants to see your costume. And I said, well, I'm not wearing the full thing. I'm just wearing the jacket. She said, no, that's okay. She doesn't care. She just wants to come and see it. So she took me over there and uh, I showed my jacket to Penny Johnson Gerald and she really liked it as well. 
So again, like a lot of people liked this cosplay. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm going to wear this cosplay again when I go to Gen Con. And uh, mind you, I do have the blue one, but I'm going to get a red one made for the command um, division. And I'm going to have something, I'm a, and, I'm, I am, and I am going to have, and it's going to be made the same way, except for it being all blue, it's going to be uh, red. And um, and the type of patch I'm going to put on there is going to have something to do with the Delta, it's going to have something to do with the Delta Flyer, the shuttle that was on uh, Voyager. That's the type of patch I'm going to design to have put on there. But uh, I walked around, um, met some new people, had lots of conversations with them. I met someone by the name of Sawyer. And we just sat and talked for maybe like an hour. And um, one thing that I didn't know was that uh, when I purchased my shore leave tickets, I realized I, I forgot that I automatically got two autographs from for free from Ben Browder and Claudia Black. Uh, both of them were on Farscape, and I and I know Claudia Black, and I believe both of them were also in Stargate. But I do know for sure that they were in uh, Farscape. But um, they started calling badge numbers, and so me and Sawyer went downstairs, stood in line so that we can get the uh, the two free autographs through them. And um, I gave those autographs to my husband because my husband ugh, loves Farscape and loves Stargate. Now, mind you, I've never seen Farscape. I've never seen Stargate, but they are on my list. Now, when it comes to Stargate, I, I don't know how long it's going to take me to get through it because when you include all the episodes and the the move and the direct to TV DVD movies and the main movie and I think there's an online um, animated series that's like 400 over either exactly 400 or over 400 episodes that I need to watch so even if I watch one a day I'm not going to get it done within one year. So I, I got a, a long ways to go. So starting sometime around, uh, I guess, August is when I'm going to start watching uh, Stargate. Actually, I'm going to start with Farscape first, and then I'm going to go into Stargate. Because a lot of people told me, if you like Star Wars, you like Star Trek, you need to watch those two shows because you're missing out on so much. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to watch them. So um, I got the autographs from both of them. Uh, and like I said, when I was speaking with Sawyer, it was nice speaking with Sawyer because Sawyer was someone who's in a similar situation that I'm in right now. And it was just nice to hear, you know, that I'm not alone in the situation that I'm in, that I can uh, overcome and things will get better. Not to say that things aren't getting better for me. They are because, you know, I just decided to worry about myself and not worry about what other people think. Um, and then after I did the autographs and talking with Sawyer, um, again, I just walked around and um, I just took in everything that happened that weekend. I sat down and I reminisced about everything that I've done, looked at all of the pictures that I've taken, and I took some more pictures. And I just took it all in and just sat down and just like enjoyed the moment that I had that I was in and just appreciated being there. And that quote from the doctor where that's just part of the quote that you see, I'm just as real as any of you. The quote actually is, um, what is the quote? Photons and force fields, flesh and blood, why quibble over details? I'm just as real as any of you. And that's what when I went to shore leave last weekend, that's when I learned what that um, quote actually meant. That regardless of who I am, what I'm made of, I'm just as real as everybody else in this world. I'm deserving of love just as everybody else in this world is. And I'm glad that I went there 
I'm glad that I experienced the things that I experienced because it has made me a better person. And, you know, it, it was it, it was just it was just so much fun. I was able to talk with people that shared some of the same interests that I share, talk with people who are going through the, some of the same struggles that I'm going through right now. And it just let me know that I'm not alone, you know. And so um, on that note, um, I just want to let you guys know that, like I said, I enjoyed every moment of Shore Lee and I can't wait to be able to experience it again the next time that I go. And so I'm just going to end it right here with, uh, you know, love yourselves, love each other. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.